Uh, talk about desire. So I think Hawkins. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk, you know, the best way to look at the the, the desire uh, desire is level to consciousness. So, like having uh, being in strong separation and desiring something is deadly uh, for an addict because it's like the craving to get something. Because basically, um, when it's projected very very strongly that you need something from the outside. It creates um, it creates complete separation from source energy. So one is totally disconnected from the source because one becomes very dualistic, and the projection of needing an object or something outside of one becomes so strong and so loud. So all addicts face obsession, which is a constant, uh, and the, and the projection of life is projected externally. So they want to get something externally before they feel they'll be satisfied. So that level of ego inflation, of wanting something to change, or wanting an object, whether it's a donut, person, place, or situation, means that uh, addicts literally become extremely unmanageable and eventually face death and insanity and hell. So that's obviously very extreme, you know. Um, so, and addicts have to, you know, in the 12 steps, all addicts, usually have to work a spiritual program or die, or go to hell, basically. It sounds extreme, but that's usually what happens with them. Um, so uh, that's not for normal people, that's for addicts, which is the extreme level, you could say that's extreme craving. You know, if you were to stop, if you were to, like drug addicts will steal from their family, uh, and will even uh, sell all the furniture, all the savings, just to get drugs, even with their mothers. You know, they can't stop it because they th the, the source of wanting that thing to get their drug supply is so severe that they become anti-spiritual to get whatever they need. And they will even carry on taking drugs. But when I say drugs, it could be cakes or it could be the craving for a person. You know, like a, like a drug addict will, will sell all the money, all their pension money, take all the money, sell the car, all the jewellery and uh, make, a, make their family homeless and still carry on doing it. They'll even carry on taking drugs until they're dying and will, and will die and cannot stop taking the drugs. So that's like craving to the extreme, you know. So that's when it goes to the, 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 the extreme levels. I mean, with, um, with, a, with a love addict, you know, uh, if, if they're obsessed with a, a romantic individual, and that romantic individual went with another person, they might either kill the other person or kill that person or do, or if they've lost the person they can't have them, might commit suicide themselves. So it's projected that this external thing, the craving is so severe that it's projected that their life depends on the thing and that they get an ongoing, they must get an ongoing connection to that thing. Otherwise, they feel like they're, uh, they're going to extreme despair and extreme withdrawal. But that's, that's the extreme level of craving. Uh, and in, um, when one is resonating at that vibration as a dominance, then uh, it leads to destruction. But you know, for a normal person, uh, at a normal level of consciousness, to have like, mild desires is okay, uh, because they have enough of a spiritual connection so that they will not, you know, it's like they have the, they have the capacity to not be extreme. So they can, you know, uh, like a, someone who's not spiritually very disconnected can have like half a biscuit and, and enjoy half a biscuit and leave it on the table. Or um, at the end of a breakup with a relationship, they, they just cry for, for a day or so and then they're on to the next relationship. Whereas, uh, so it's, not, it's going to be very, very mild. And so they seemingly enjoy it, but it has no destructive, um, no destructive. I think, you know, as you get into um, the higher levels of spirituality, one te you know, the joy tends to be more intrinsic. Uh, and one is working on not, one is working less and less on having dualistic joy, but trying to source the joy directly from the dissolution of the separated self. Because the I, you know, which is fine, one doesn't have to become an enlightened, uh, enlightened person, it's not necessary. 
In fact, one can live their whole life dualistically uh, and enjoy donuts and enjoy the odd pint of alcohol, enjoy relationships. They, they're not in extreme separation, and so they can enjoy things moderately and stop and move on. And usually the loss of a thing that they project with the specialness, they can get over within a short period of time and move on. Whereas for an addict, it's like you're taking their life away if you take away their lover or their donuts or their drugs or their alcohol. And they will go to extreme circumstances to keep that going. Um, so it's not life-threatening, so that's fine. So if you're, if you're at moderate levels of spirituality, even relatively high levels, you can enjoy desires. But desire, the more you go into advanced spiritual work, you're going more into non-duality. So the more you go into non-duality, and think for myself, is because I come from an extreme addiction background is that you know and I can go back there so I've had to do a lot of work on the idea of projecting specialness onto anything because it took me to kidney failure and and uh, addiction being so extreme that you know quite literally this is a true story I mean it sounds I think it's, it's kind of hilarious like imagine getting being a food addict and getting kidney failure and, and you can't stop uh, eating food and other addictions to such an extremity which is life-threatening. And then the doctors, and I had a degree, degree in biochemistry, so I was familiar with medicine, and the doctor's saying to you, avoid high potassium foods or you'll get a heart attack. And they let me out of hospital and I bought a bag of bananas, which is top of the list. And, and then I had to have blood test and I had to go in for emergency treatment at A&E because I was about to have a heart attack. So that was the level of extremity of suicidal ideation by making like, um, basically I wanted to use food to kill myself because I'd made food so special. The projection of specialness. So, so for me, the projection of specialness onto, so, you know, I've, I've, had, I've had over a decade, I'm essentially in a position of neutrality around food and body through just eliminating the meaning. And also when you, if you're an addict, not an addict, how much you're in, how separated you are is the pain of letting something go. I don't know if this makes sense. Like, for a donut, if you try and take donuts away from a donut addict, or alcohol away from an alcoholic, or drugs away from a drug addict, they'll, they'll you know, unless they've got a, an alternative supply easily, you know, you'll see a very, very ugly person. That they won't let you, they'll even become violent to make sure they keep their supply. But if you're quite normal, if someone steals your donuts or just takes your donuts, you'll be able to let it go quite easily and get over it. So that's the difference between the level of severity of losing something you project with specialness. Now, when you're getting into, obviously, most, not obviously, but uh, people who are into advanced spiritual work, maybe s things like the pathway of sainthood and unconditional love, to, to equally have love in every moment. Well, if you've got, you know, to see the divine in everyone equally, then you can't have specialness. You're, you're trying to let go of specialness. Like, there's one person in this room who's more special than all the other people. So, I like everyone here moderately, but there's one person who's, who's more special than the others. So that becomes more and more intolerable the more spiritual work you do. You go like, no, then I, I projected more specialness onto one person. And as a, you know, coming from an addiction background, I could make one person my, my drug, you know, and everyone else would become meaningless. So hence the need to take out these projections of specialness. Uh, so that I'm special or another person is special or, I'm, or a certain food is special, but it also it disconnects one in time. If anything is special, um, to the extent things are special in my ego, I get disconnected from the present moment. Because if there's no donuts in the room, or if my favorite girlfriend is on the other side of town, you know, it's like there is a, a yearning to go and see the woman over there, or to get, buy the donuts in the super. I can't be here, because the source is disconnected from, in time from now, you know. And I'm I'm now bound to limitation. I can only be happy if I've got a donut, or I can only be happy if this girl's around, or whatever it is. So it becomes a limitation. Uh, so I've had to, but I have nothing against desire, and I think you know, as long as you're not beyond the critical point of becoming an addict, it's like divinity allows you to have desires without destruction. So I think at a certain level of consciousness, 
one can, because one is relatively spiritually connected, one can enjoy things. You know, it's like I'm going to go and enjoy, enjoy a five star meal. It doesn't mean you're going to be going to that same restaurant every day for the rest of your life. You enjoy it. I can have a girlfriend. I'm not going to commit suicide if she goes with another person. I can get over that quite quickly. Um, you know, so, so you know your consciousness is quite good. And then if you stay at that level of consciousness, you can enjoy your desires for the rest of your life at that level of consciousness. Of course, if you go towards um, sainthood, then having special desires becomes a bit more difficult because you're now trying to work on letting go of special desires. And if you go to enlightenment, the idea of a me desiring something, you start working on it from that level. So they're all different levels of consciousness. When you go below a certain threshold, you become an addict to the gates of death and hell. But at, at normal healthy people who don't want to become enlightened, uh, enlightened, who don't want to become like Mother Teresa, um, you know, can enjoy uh, moderate desires. And the thing with moderate desires is they don't really disconnect you from yourself. You still feel quite happy before and after it. Like you feel quite happy now, and then someone gives you a cake, you eat the cake, and that was quite enjoyable. You did, you did desire it, but it was quite mild. It wasn't like life, oh my God, I'm suddenly going to get a ton of relief because I'm eating a chocolate cake. And then you, f you forget about it quite quickly, even though you enjoyed it. So that's like, you can, so they're quite, you, you, have, you can have things in, you can enjoy your desires in moderation. And they don't tend to, and you, your fluctuation, you're quite happy, you get a blip of happiness, and you're quite happy again afterwards. So it's not addictive. For like a, an addict, it's like you feel bad and you're hoping to get your cake. And then you eat your cake and you get like a huge hit of, you get very, very happy because you've just eaten the cake. And then suddenly there's no more cakes left and then you feel desperate again. You have to find your next cake. So that's different because you're going like this and you become addicted to getting the next cake. Uh, so that's what I'd say on desires. Nothing wrong with them unless they're killing you.